Let me get uh, Jesse on the phone real fast. Jesse James Dupree on the phone. Not not good morning. Good, not good morning, hyping, Bubba Army. <laughs> not hyping uh, a gig in Green Bay tonight, uh, but instead uh, slinging. God, Jesse, I got to tell you, you are you're, you're on TV more than most. You know, rock guys. You you find a way to get on TV a lot, don't you? I didn't find my way. I mean, they uh, you know the executive producer that that I worked with on the Full Throttle Saloon reality TV show. And I was the executive producer on the show side. And then every network, as you know, they have their own executive producer that you that, that you work with on a day-to-day basis. And the guy that was at the Turner Network, he's now over at History. And I hadn't spoken to him in a couple of years. And, and he reaches out and says, his name's Jim Pascarella. Great guy, Jim Pascarella. And he reaches out and says, I got a show that's right up your alley. And, and, and that's another thing you know as well as I do, that you always brace yourself when somebody says that because – you never kind of know. You're never really prepared for well, what because, they because uh, Jesse, associate you with. Yeah, because you know? Jesse Dupree's got a lot of different alleys. <laughs> well, you're just like, what, what do they associate you with? You know, yeah. and uh, you know, and uh, and and so. Uh, you know, it's like, well, yeah, hey, we got a great idea for you, Bubba. It's, it's Bubba mopeds. What do you think? You know, and you know, you're like, ah, I'm not so much. I don't want to do it. But uh, you know, they, I don't know, fat guy, a fat guy on a moped. You know, I mean, with your with your executive producer ability, we might be able to make it. I'm looking for some kind of deal here. Fat guys on mopeds. <laughs> <laughs> They're turning it into a show. Yeah. But uh, but anyway, so he goes, I got a show right up your alley. And, and I said, okay. And he goes, it's the booze, bets, and sex that built America. And I said, okay, I'm in. And uh, but the, you've probably seen some of the history channel, like the, the food that built America, the machines that built America. Those They produce those shows. They're really great. It's I got to tell you, man, history channel, they have some of the best, uh, and they have these one-off things. And these one-off topics that you you know only you can find on the History Channel, but you're right that you know, they do they are really really good at kind of getting at this little niche so to speak, and it and it's really it's really informative, and I find myself watching a lot of their stuff. Yeah, they, I mean they they produce it well. They have the reenactments. They have the, like they dig deep. They 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 you you feel smarter after you watch the show, really, and because uh, you learn stuff. And uh, but it's it's great. And uh, and so you know we get into this show. It's the history of booze, bets, and sex. So we discuss you know the history of like the history of condoms. You know there was there was a German guy named Julius Smith, and he comes. He's somewhat crippled, and he hold comes on, to America. Hold on, hold on. Before you flap your dumb ass, Kennesaw, Georgia gums about it let me play the trailer hold on stand by okay okay julia schmidt right. barely right. scrapes by i think i think this is it isn't it jesse this right here working at a sausage factory can you hear that julia I, 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 I mean here he is he's yeah. on a crutch bum leg and he lives in the cd section of that, that's it right there right yes all right here we go so this is julia what's the guy's name Julia Smith. Here we go. Julia Schmidt barely scrapes by, working at a sausage factory. Julia Smith. I mean, here he is. He's on a crutch, bum leg, and he lives in the seedy section of Manhattan, where there's prostitution and just all kinds of of, of illegal activities are going on. You know, the same place that Jackal plays their shows on Saturday <laughs> night. <laughs> People can be born into the opportunity to create success, or they could create success out of necessity. Despite his humble beginnings, the product Schmidt innovates will one day prevent all manner of deadly disease, rewrite U.S. law, ignite a sexual revolution, and fuel a $9 billion industry. The booze, bets, and sex that built America premieres Sunday, June 12th at 8 on the History Channel. So this Sunday, 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 Central. And now, yeah. are, uh, and is is the is the the booze bet and sex that build America, and that's just now, the guy that did the condom is just one of many stories, right, Jesse? <clears throat> Yeah, we talk about the Billy Wilkerson, you know, the guy that started the Hollywood Reporter, and then how he had his vision to go and create, uh, you know, what turned into Las Vegas, and how he got tied up with the mob. We talk about uh, the, the the history of hand roll of hand roll cigarettes versus, you know, uh, whenever Buck Duke, you know, from the Duke family. You talk about Duke Power, Duke University, and uh, and and Buck Duke was up and coming in his power to powerful tobacco family. He wanted to make his niche, and he ended up securing the rights from a guy named James Bonsack, 
so that had, they created a machine that instead of a hand, uh, one person being able to roll four cigarettes in a minute, this machine could do 120 in a minute, and it just revolutionized the cigarette industry. And but they're just some just fascinating stories. Talk about Jack Daniels, you know, and uh, of course I got Jesse James Bourbon, so I study all of these things and these guys that built these legendary brands. Jack Daniels' name, Bubba, his real name was Jasper Newton. Can you imagine going to the bar and ordering a Jasper Newton? I'll take a Jasper Newton, please, straight up. <laughs> yeah. I prefer I prefer you ask for a Jesse James Bourbon in Coke. Yeah. And uh, very, very proud of the Jesse James Bourbon. It's doing really great. And, and oh, it I is. Total, and, and what's, I have total what's, respect for the, for, the, for the big boys, but uh, we're, we're making our own niche, and I plan on having, you know, having uh, that same kind of success. We just got to keep digging. Now, let me ask you a question, uh, Jesse. Just on the surface, with the first story being the one that with the one that, the trailer that you just played, um, the the sausage guy with a peg leg that invented the condom. Am I assuming that he used the sausage casing for? Is that what he, he used? Absolutely it? did. Yeah, he did. And you know, and, and it's, it's and I'm not going to spoil the show by telling you this. Right, but, right. Uh, he he did do that, and and but he went to jail because. Um, because it was illegal, the Comstock Act. You know, the government was trying to regulate uh, uh, sexual activities, and now there was even instances where husbands and wives went to jail for certain word getting out about things they were doing sexually or birth control and things like that. And so it was a different time. And he went to jail, but he got out and he continued his quest. And you got to watch the History Channel to find out how it all transpired and what went down. And it airs this this Saturday, at, I mean, this Sunday at 8 p.m. This Sunday at 8 p.m. And I'm very proud to be part of this series. I got I got a, I got I got a text from your son. Uh, I think uh, Ian is that his name? Nigel. Nigel. I got a text from your son Nigel saying that we're all going to retire on uh, the video footage of you trying Ambien for the first time. <laughs> we're all going to retire on that. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> you hey, I'm not even trying to bust your balls, but you got to you, you told the story on the on the tour bus when I saw you a couple of weeks ago. You got to tell the story about your wife's like Jesse. You never sleep. You get your nonstop. You know you got to get some sleep. It's gonna kill your daddy's got a heart attack. Jesse, you got to take these pill, take this Ambien, and you'll get a good night's sleep. Tell tell well, everybody well, what well, happened. It was actually. My wife was was fussing because I never sleep, and my mom, my mom was alive then, and my mom, she uh, uh, she goes, well, I got some pills that the doctor gave me that'll make you sleep, and I didn't think anything about it. She, and so within the next day, you know, my mom being my mom, there's some pills sitting on the counter. Yeah. And and my, and my wife goes, your mom dropped off these pills, these sleeping pills. You should try them out. And uh, and I again never thought about it. And I'd heard of Ambien, but I just uh, to be honest, I just was not. Thinking back, because I'm just not into all of that. Right. And so, so I take this pill, and and I had a few drinks, and I'm downstairs by myself. And what happened was, my son comes through the kitchen, Nigel, and he sees me, and I'm planted face down in a gallon of ice cream, passed out. Passed like out. Literally a gallon of ice cream, my face down in the ice cream, because <laughs> ambient. Ambien will make you eat your ass off. Oh, I mean, you won't mm -hmm. eat. I mean, you wake up, you know, you'll wake up with cheese cracker wrappers all over, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And so, so, uh, so he sees me there. He goes running up to the studio and tells the engineer in the studio, he says, uh, Dad's dead. And Don goes, what do you mean he's dead? He goes, he's dead. And Don goes, well, did you try to shake him or wake him? He goes, I'm not touching him. <laughs> yeah. Nig so, Nigel thinks he's going to go to jail for tampering, so he's going to let you stay faced out in ice cream. Yeah, you know, I'm not going to touch. So they come down to the house. Well, then all I know is I, I don't remember no any of it. I wake up the next day, and I'm in in my bed in my bedroom, fully dressed, but felt like a million bucks. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I did, and I didn't know what to go. And of course, I go downstairs, and they're all looking at me like you know, pale, like what the you know. And uh, so then, it, seriously, there wasn't really any dots connected on that until I did it again. And then when I did it again. Uh, my wife, I woke up the next morning and my wife was in the corner of the bedroom with a Bible and a cross holding it out at me like, don't you come near me. <laughs> and and I had terrorized her all night long. That's where Papal came from. I had, Papal! She, she said I kept trying to mount up on her and, and, and was popping her going, Papal, Papal. And, and uh, so that kind of stuck in that. That's where that gave the birth to Papal for, that we started using on the TV show, the full throttle TV show. Just fun stuff, man. Just, I know. I wish we but, had uh, that footage, man. Well, it, it all came to an end when she caught me outside, butt naked, taking pictures of the shrubbery. And, uh, <laughs> and, 
do you get a, do you get any do you get any do you get any blowback you know you were i think you were one of i think 12 rock stars that apl- that appeared in, in playgirl of the the men of rock are you do you ever get any blowback because it, it showed your you know it showed your junk do you get any blowback on that at all the only thing that's ever came back on me about that that was that you know that made me go oh was was you know I, was you know, a few years later, I ended up having a, a daughter, and so oh. then when my da- and when my daughter got up into high school, it became a thing. Oh, and- did, did she come home and be like, "Dad, really? I, you yeah. know, my girlfriend yeah. showed me a picture, Dad." Yeah, yeah. So that that's that's the one that you gotta you kind of go, Ooh, okay. Yeah, I got a bunch but, uh, of those. I got a bunch of those moments in my life as my son got older. Man, he started googling me. It gets pretty bad at times. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you got. You, that's whatever you got. You know, do as I say, not as I do. Hold on, hold on. I got. Let, let me play a little bit. I think you just released this. I think it was. Was it Friday of last week? Yeah, Friday week. of last week. Yeah, Friday of last week. It's your new. It's your new single. Your new record. Record. Uh, get up all in it. It's you. It's just you and the boys. Uh, just doing what you do. Just, just, just rocking. And I think I played it a couple. I played it Friday, and I played it a couple times this week. But since I have you on the phone promoting the history deal, I thought maybe we just play just, just maybe up to the first lick here. You know, Jesse, you're one of the many guys that a guy could get blindfolded and be like, "Who's this guy?" You have such a distinct voice. You know, I'm like, like there's just not a lot of people that had that same Kennesaw, Georgia twang. You know what I'm saying? Well, thank you. You know, I, I, you can hear in that song that I pulled from influences. Like, you know, my dad, when I, back in the early seventies, Bubba, my dad worked at Lockheed aircraft and my dad got laid off. He didn't have a 10th grade education. And a guy had given him a job, a union job that he wasn't technically supposed to have. And he was working at Lockheed aircraft. He was making better money than he should have been making. And we lived in a small, lower middle-class home. I came home from school one day and they, the, 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 the United States was going through a hard time at that point in the early seventies. And my, and Lockheed laid a bunch of people off. My dad, I came home from school. He sold everything we had, including my bicycle. And we moved to Gadsden, Alabama, and we bought a little cafe. And my dad couldn't even boil water. And so before he opened up the cafe, he went to work for Kentucky Fried Chicken because he was going to steal the colonel's recipe. <laughs> <laughs> this is straight out Law Hill Jack yeah, stuff, ain't it? Yeah, yeah. So, so, but but he ended up back then. They used to quarter their chickens by hand. It's, it's Kentucky Fried Chicken. They because franchises were just getting started then, you know. Right. And uh, so and so he ended up cutting his, his his thumb, and he ended up he quit the, the colonel. He opened up his cafe, and we specialized in farm raised grain-fed catfish, but in that little cafe, right down the road from a steel plant, all the truck drivers, all the tractor trailer rig drivers used to come in, and they would... um they would come in and eat lunch or and dinner. They'd haul steel from it, from from uh, Gadsden, Alabama, down to Birmingham and back. And so, but in that cafe was a jukebox, and on that jukebox there was 45 records of James Brown and and Wilson Pickett and Joe Tex. And they, wow, I got you. You know, just, they just had the, the greatest screams and voice. And I'd lost all my friends back in Georgia. I didn't really have any friends over there. And I would go in the back of this mobile home trailer that we lived in on an asphalt parking lot. And, and 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 I would turn my forty fives up, and I would mimic those screams. But that's where I learned how to to to, to replicate those incredible voices in those 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 great soulful those voices. And you'll love this, Bubba. On the back side of that mobile home trailer was a fifteen foot high cinder block wall on the back of that parking lot. On the back side of that cinder block building, uh, the cinder block wall was one of America's only triple X. Drive in theater. Oh, called the yeah. Rebel, yeah. The Rebel Drive In. <laughs> would you jump you the, How many times would you jump the wall? Seriously. What we would do is, is we would go, you, we could go around the wall because the wall just went around the corner of our right. parking lot. And so we'd go around the wall and we'd walk up this kind of dirt road where these little pillbox mill houses were. And they dead ended into a chain link fence where the triple X drive in. It's called the Rebel Drive In. You can Google it. And one of America's only triple X drive is in Gadsden, Alabama. And, uh, and so we would pull the fence up at the back. Somebody would, one of, well, one of us would slide up underneath the fence. We would take the entire back row of speakers turn them wide open and pull them as far back toward the fence as we couldn't point them toward the fence. Then we'd crawl back under the fence and we'd crawl up on that wall 
we'd walk down the wall and we'd jump off the wall over onto a roof of a little guy's little uh, shed and we would lay on the shingles that would be warm from the sun that day. We'd lay on those warm shingles in the evening and watch that triple H drive. Man, we need, we need that, a that Jesse was, James was... Dupree documentary. We need, a lot, we need a documentary of you growing up. Well, if you think about it, I mean, it's, it, you know, the, the, the being able to be part of the booze, bets, and sex that built America, it just came. It was so much ingrained in my life with all the things that I was exposed to. But being in the liquor business now, and of course that that that, that experience of my childhood as a teenager, having that triple X right in my backyard, and and then of course you know the jukebox that had all those great voices coming out of it. And, and let me and, tell you uh, something: but, living in a trailer on an asphalt parking lot isn't necessarily the best of kind. You know, you didn't have an in-ground pool or nothing like that now i mean it was that's tough. no we we, we, did, we didn't but i found music and uh, and so when you hear the new single that you just played or you see the video on youtube which is well over a hundred though just in a couple of days time so it's heading toward one hundred fifty thousand views on the get on all YouTube. up it. get up all up get all up in it yeah get all up in it and uh, but when you hear that and but we're selling it's the first single off of a new album that we're dropping the, the album's going to drop in sturges at the full throttle saloon August the 11th, which happens to be coincidentally 30 years to the day since the first Jackal album came out. We're just the same night we're playing Surges this year. Yeah. And uh, so the, the new album, Jackal 30 and Coming in Hot, is, <laughs> is going to be released on August 11th. Hold on here. I'm going to tell your mama on you. That used to be, man, that would be when you'd be hanging with your boys and your. And so, and another mom would tell you, you're, I'm going to tell your mom on you, man. You know, you got an ass whipping when you got home, a straight ass whipping. You know, that, that's what, that's what's, that's what's missing in America these yes. days is those ass whippings. That's yes. what's missing. You want to talk about the ultimate gun control? Get the mamas and daddies to start back whooping those asses. Right. And, and remember, what, and we used to get our, missing. we used to get our ass whipped in high in, in school. We get your ass whipped in school. Yes, you'd go down to the principal's office and get it, bend over and grab that desk and then paddle you. And he'd, have, mean, the, and he'd have the secretary just kind of you know, put her head inside the door just to be the witness, and he'd give her give you three whacks, and then you'd be, you know, then then you didn't want to cry, but it hurt like hell because it was a wooden paddle, because if you cried, the boys would make fun of you. But you got an ass whipping at school. You really did. You learned that there are consequences. Mm-hmm. You learned that they are consequences, and that's what, again, that's what's missing. It's so simple. They'll spend all this money on all these campaigns, and they'll argue till they're blue in the face up in Washington, and there's so many problems that could be solved by just, you know, just putting all of that energy into, you know, to, to hashtag raise your damn kids. I mean, did what, Nigel get ass what, whipped? Did Nigel, did Nigel get ass whippings? My son did. Yes, he, yes, he did, and, and boy, and I, just like his dad got one, and there were many of them, so... Yeah, it's it, that's again. It's, I'm not sitting there saying beat your children. No, so neither am I. I'm not saying beat your kids at all. But I'm saying sometimes a nice little swift, uh, swift uh, thing on the ass at at eight years old can really straighten a kid right on up. Now, the, the, I tell you, the thing that was the most scary was whenever your grandmother would say, "You go outside and you pick me some switches." Yeah. Did you Did you ever have to do that? Yeah, it was called. Cu- it was called. It, it was called. Go cut a switch. Go cut a switch. Yeah. Yeah, you had to go get your little. You had to cut your own switches because mm-hmm. you need you you. And if you went back in with some switches that was too little, then she'd go get them and they'd be too big. Or <laughs> like, oh no. Or the worst was like when you're getting ass whipping and then you start kind of maybe getting a little rebuttal going. That just gave them more time to start whipping. So you just got to sit and be like, but I did it. Shut, shut, shut the. You know, you didn't want to ask questions or make any statements when you're in the and commits to getting an ass kicking. My dad comes home from work. My mom, she's I'm losing her mind. I'm a teenager, right after a teenager. I come home, she's losing her mind, raising hell about. It. My dad's tired. He's worked all day. He don't even know what happened. He didn't want to hear anything about either side, and he just he just whooped my ass. I mean, he took his belt off, and I got an ass whooping. And then and after he got through whooping me, I said, "But dad, she's crazy." <laughs> and, he, and, he and 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 my, this is when the world shaped up. This was that was the last whooping I ever had. Because and I'll tell you why. Because I looked at him. I said, "Dad, she's crazy." And he looked at me and he said, "Son, I know she is, but if there ain't nothing I can do about it, there ain't a damn thing you can do." About it. <laughs> Just, and, I, and I went at that point. I went, "Oh, so he knows." Yeah, he knows. And, 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 and we were all on a good. T- we were on good terms after that. <laughs> from there on out. Now, did you ever get a point like when Nigel got to be like twelve, and you go to whip that ass, and you're like, you know, 
They're kind of like, you know, you can't, you're not even really making it. You're not even scratching the surface. They're almost a grown kid. Like, you know, you ain't got near the stuff you used to have. Kind of gets to the point where it kind of like becomes a moot point at that point. Yeah, well, you know, Nigel, I, Nigel is he's a beautiful kid. I mean, he looks like his mama. I mean, I've, I've got a beautiful son and, and very proud of him, and he's turned out to be a fine young man. He's a rock but, star, uh, isn't he? I mean, he even looks like a rock star. Mm-hmm. He's living in Nashville, running around being good looking and playing in bands and doing his thing. But I, but the thing about Nigel is, is I've raised Jethro Bodine with him. That that guy, that kid can walk out and pick a car up. I mean, he, he's like he is just cock strong. I mean, just it's unbelievable. I mean, he's a he's he's no joke when it comes to being. And he, but he's not muscled up or nothing. He just uh, he's a kid, just absolutely a, 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 like an oak. So he's like and, country uh, farm strong, like that kind of yeah. deal. Yeah, yeah, just I mean, and so uh, he either get he either gets it on the, his mama's side or from his real daddy. I, <laughs> I got a, I got a question for you. Out of all the boys in the band, Roman, Chris, and Jeff, which one would have a better chance of kicking your ass? Which would have a better chance kicking my ass? Man, I, they probably all would because I, I couldn't bring myself to hit either one. I love I love I, all of them. Man. You, and I, I'm not being a wuss when I say that. I mean, seriously, that's, I, uh, we've been together. Think about it. 30 years we've been together. If you'd asked me that back, you know, years ago, I'd probably been <laughs> picking somebody out. But, it's you know, it's it's not even about it anymore. We, you, we just, you, know who, you know who sounds just like if you close your eyes – and you hear Jeff, the guitar player, t- talk. He, you yeah. and him, almost sound identical. This, just, uh, I know you guys are born and raised within miles of each other. I think, but you guys have that same, like, almost sound identical. Well, Jeff is a Jeff is God, man. He's he's got such a personality, and uh, I well, love they all Jeff. Do. I mean, they they all do, and but Jeff has got the, the fun thing about Jeff is is Jeff has got the world according to Jeff. You know, I mean, the way he perceives things and the things that, you know, he'll say, hey, man, check this out, and he'll show you, you know, Japanese gay wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, something that, and, he, and he'll sit there and just laugh, and, you know, just, I mean, just it's, it's fun stuff. And uh, I, I, I seriously, I got, we got off stage the other night, and he he went toward the back of the bus. I went and I was over at my bunk, and the the door was shut toward the back of the bus. We weren't off stage twenty minutes, and and I'm hearing these fart noises coming out. And he's back there just laughing his ass off because he was what's that guy there? There's some guy on the internet that's the gastro king or whatever. He's you know you don't talk about Mr. Flagellant or whatever. No, I don't. But I'm gonna but I'm gonna I'm gonna look. I don't know, it's just something, but he was just like, he was like, just like that's the kind, Jeff loves that kind of silly stuff, and he's always laughing about it. Now, Jeff, Jeff doesn't sleep in a bunk. He sleeps in the back, right? That's what Chris said. Jeff can't he sleep sleeps, in a bunk. He sleeps, on, he sleeps on the couch and with the windows open and the fans blowing, and he uh, he, he gets claustrophobic, and uh, he he. he <laughs> He likes to sprawl out stuff like that. You know, I, I, uh, for me, I, I just, I don't sleep much anyway. So, it's, so you put me on a bus where it's, you know, beating you going down the road. I, you know, I, I know. I, I, I get, I get emails from Jesse. Honest to God, Anna, I get emails from Jesse at two forty-five, three a.m. Hey, Bubba, still up doing some business? <laughs> How about uh, promoting my history gimmick on Friday? But like, all right, buddy, <laughs> I'm, ju- I'm just now getting up to get ready to go to the gym. I don't even know if Jesse's been to bed yet. Like, like, what's your like when you get off stage? Let's say by like. Like, you know, eleven, twelve. Are you are you headed to the next city usually that night, or do you guys just? Yeah, we wrote, yeah, just like what you saw when we played down at uh, your Bubba Fest down there at the uh, Orange County Chopper uh, right. Roadhouse and and uh, and and the Burt's Bear. Which, by the way, but what? I didn't mean to interrupt you. That place is the first time I've been there. I've been there since. That is a nice place. Burt's got a beautiful place there. <laughs> Yeah, Bert and Keith. I mean, you know, they 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 partnered up, and right. you know, Bert's got Bert's Barracuda, and then Keith came in and put the Orange County Chopper oh. uh, you know, a, a roadhouse there, and then they built that big venue on the back, and and of course we oversold it, man. It was just packed out, and what, oh, what, and what a, but not, what a neat little town. what a neat little spot, huh? Yeah, it was electric, and, uh, and it's been it's been a little too long since we've been to Tampa, and so you know it's great. But you know, as far as me, you know, we 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 get through playing, you know, as far as my sleeping, so we get we get through playing, and uh, and then we'll roll on to the next town. So did you guys did you up. guys roll out that night? Like after you got into doing all your PR stuff with all your boys and yeah. stuff, you guys rolled out that night. 
yeah, we rolled out and we we woke up on the bus at the next gig, and then we, you know, we'll uh we'll, we'll grab some breakfast or something, and then I do I, I if I'm doing radio that morning and I got to knock that stuff out, and then I'll go meet with distributors for the Jesse James Bourbon during the day, and you know that kind of thing, and then and then uh and then maybe try to get the gym in, and then uh then we grab something to eat toward the afternoon, and then we play that night, and then everybody starts showing up, you know, all of our friends and stuff yeah. start showing up. We have a little have a little party, and then we uh roll into the next town. And, uh, you know, it, i got to tell you, too, we, we just got in yesterday because Scott Barnes and Fred Stockton, who were, you know, from, from R&DC, who were, you know, at, at the show with us, and you got to be friends with them that night. They, uh, they're over the Jesse James Bourbon there in Florida. Right. And, uh, they, they're they supposed actually, to give me a or, shot chiller. They, and they, they just came in yesterday. Okay, good. They came good. in yesterday, and it's getting wrapped. Uh, they're wrapping it, with, wrapping it with the Devil's Devil. Oh, yeah. Oh, logos. Nice. And so you're going you're gonna to get the uh, – the, the devil's devil shot machine and some devil's devil. Anna, will you do that. De- will you do what? Will you do devil devil risky shots with me? Yes. Oh, it, it tastes. I mean, I'm not trying to say it, it, it but it has kind of a fireball feel to that's it. That's okay. Fireball. That's right. And mine. It's, and it's, but it's smoother than fireball. Chilled. Well, it's, it's, just not, it's not. I'm not knocking fireball. No, they're, I'm not they're obviously, they, But it, but it's sir. It's not as syrupy as fireball. Right. And it's not as anti freezy. I believe it, yeah, that. It's kind a of similar a similar ingredient to anti freeze. It, it's 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 a smoother, spicier. Uh, more liquory feel, but the, the honey is so good, Bubba. Oh yeah, on ice. Oh, the yeah. honey is amazing. So you tell them well, the, son the of a bitches the, to get that down here. The honey's the best. well. We do have the honey bourbon down there. Like I say, Scott, I'll get Scott, mm-hmm. and, and I'm sure Scott Barnes and Scott. Fred what Stock were you drinking on stage? Were you drinking a honey bourbon on stage or the Devil's Devil? I, I, we, I actually did because you know you you were there on the bus with us and, and we opened up the bottle of honey bourbon with the honey bourbon the Jesse James honey bourbon is the absolute best honey bourbon on the market. 100%. But I have to be honest with all my my Bubba Army friends out there, it's the best on the market. But we cheated. All the other all the other honey bourbons were out ahead of us, so we were able to blind taste sample as we perfected our recipe, and uh, and we didn't let up until we were just whooping all of them, and it's the best honey bourbon on the market. It is 100%. And, uh, it no, is. it is, and I'm not even a bourbon guy. Like, I'm really not, and I and I had two shots of the Devil's Devil, and I didn't have any of the... No, we did. I had a shot of honey bourbon, too. I did. Yeah, the, the Devil's Devil and the honey bourbon and, of course, the regular Jesse James bourbon is, is what I call liquid America. And uh, we've been, you know, we've been swinging it hard, and I'm proud to be working with the guys from R&D.C. down there in Florida. They, uh, they're the biggest in the country, and uh, so they're just now starting to wrap up around it. And, uh, and if, if anybody out there, any of your bars, any of your stores, please ask them if, they've got, if they don't have the Jesse James bourbon, the honey bourbon, the spice bourbon, or the, 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 the Devil's Devil cinnamon whiskey, please ask them to bring it in. Tell them that Republic National. R N D C has it ready to bring it over. So, like, if you're a guy, of- if you're a guy and, you're, and your liquor distributor, you know, you should ask, like, if you own a bar or something, I can be like, hey, can you guys start carrying that Jesse James? Yeah, I like to start, you know, I like to start, you know, buying a few bottles a week from you, like something like that, okay. right? Yeah, yeah, and, and and if they ask, well, why would you want me to bring that into my store? You tell them, said because they put the equivalent of five Viagra's in every bottle. <laughs> 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 anyway, just and Jesse, before I let you go, let's promote the history deal one more time. Sunday, uh, eight o'clock Eastern, seven Central. Uh, it's a ser- now. Are you kind of like the the the, the, the spoke? Like you, you're it. the guy that sets up each story. Is that kind of like what your role no, is? No, I'm 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 one of the I'm one of the several uh, quote unquote contributors. That, that, yeah, and uh, and I was again very honored that they asked me to be part of it. And uh, and I was sitting in a room, you know, up in New York with some of the, the experts that were had also came in to shoot their parts and such. And, you know, they look professors and very distinguished individuals. So I definitely was uh, stuck out. But uh, I was very proud to be part of it. And, and I wish the show had been called The Booze, Bets, Sex, and Rock and Roll. Yes. That created America. But, but I, I'm, I'm kind of making it that on my way because it's, you know, we re- just released the brand new single, Get All Up In It, uh, the first single off a new album that's coming out. And uh, so if you haven't had a chance, folks, seriously, check out the Spotify, Pandora, whatever, all the, the outlets, Apple, they've all got the, the new single, Get All Up In It, and check out the video on YouTube. Bubba, I love you, man. You, you're always, you've, in all these years we've been together, you've, you've always had your hand on my back. You've mm-hmm. always uh, supported, and I appreciate you. And, and I know the, the, everybody out there listening are diehard Bubba Army members, and awesome, I see man. your shirt every, every single show. I, I look out and I see that Bubba Army shirt. I mean, so there's or multiple shirts because they they show up at all of our shows. Proud to be part of your fraternity. And thank you for wearing it on stage, my friend. And more importantly, like when you got one offs like this, or you got a 
you know, you got a bottle signing somewhere, or you got a new a new single that's coming out, or when your album drops, any of that, Jesse, always text me a few days heads up. And I, you know, carte blanche with me, my friend, like carte, like just but listen, carte blanche, but you can't give me a time like that. I know. Thank you for telling the history, people, man. We can't do Bubba in a nine minute junket deal. Bubba and I go <laughs> out. Bubba and I, Bubba and I could do forty minutes without without even mm-hmm. blinking. You know. Well, the History Channel was excited about us getting together, and, that, but, and they, the, you know, those guys, they, it's their job to take control and make yeah. these things happen. And but they were really cool to to understand that you and I've got a long standing relationship, and they they were cool with us putting it together. Ourselves. And maybe so give and maybe give my information, maybe give my information to Olivia and say, listen, if you guys got anything that's coming up, uh, I, you know, I, I got I got a big audience, and I'm a pretty good radio guy. I'll I'll promote whatever they want me to. Yeah, she's uh, she she she'll probably be getting uh, you know copy or she's probably even listening right now. Olivia's great. Uh, she's been a, a absolute machine in keeping up with everything that we can do. So you guys, uh, Sunday night, eight p.m. The booze bets and sex at built America. The new Jackal single. Get all up in it. Please come see us whenever we're out on tour. And uh, Bubba Army forever, baby. Love you, buddy. Woo! Hey, tell Chris, Jeff, and Roman I said hi, bud. You got it. All right, Jesse. Love you, buddy. God, I love that guy. That's that a friend. Yeah, Solid. That's a real friend. 